Indeed, it's an honor and privilege to uh, introduce uh, Shri Madhukar Sabnavis. Sir, uh, with your permission, I'll introduce yourself to all the uh, attendants and participants. Sir is the Vice Chairman and Director of Client Relations at Ogilvy India. Prior to this, he was the country head for Ogilvy Planning and Discovery. Uh, Madhukar Sabnavis is also a mathematics honors gold medalist from St. Stephen's College, Delhi and PGDM from IIM Ahmedabad. He started his advertising career with Clarion Advertising in the year 1985 and moved to Ogilvy in 1988. In the last 36 years, he has worked on wide portfolio of clients, including Amazon, Asian Paints, Bajaj, Cadbury, Coke, ITC, Lenovo, Max Life, PD Life, PD Light, Star, Titan, Unilever, and Vodafone India. Under his leadership, Ogilvy has been a much awarded Indian agency in advertising effectiveness. He has also developed a number of workshop tools like Ogilvy Open Source, Ogilvy Vision, and Ogilvy Compact that help solve business and brand problems. Uh, <clears throat> he has conducted training programs for clients and industry bodies taken classes in India, in, uh, in the industry and business schools across India. He was a member of managing committees of many industry bodies, such as ASCI, the AAAI and the Ad Club. He was also a member of the team that set up the ISDI and WPP School of Communication in Mumbai. He is passionate about cricket, Hindi movies, Indian culture and above all, sharing knowledge. So I think, sir, with this, uh, over to you. We are all extremely eager to listen to you and learn from you and get inspired from you. So uh, thank you all. Uh, Madhukar, sir, if you may please begin with. Thank you, Sarvesh and Abhishek for having me here. I'm so delighted to be with you. And as Sarvesh ended my introduction with, I love sharing knowledge. And I'm going to use the next 30 minutes to share my knowledge about brand building with you as a group of people. I don't think I'm more intelligent or wiser than you. It's just that I've had a different set of experience in the world of brand building. And so I'm so delighted to have an opportunity of sharing my knowledge about brand building to you in a manner that is relevant to you and your industry. My fundamental premise that I have learned over the last 36 years is any product can be made into a brand. Brand building is for everyone. For a moment, just pause and think, you know, how much would you pay for a black colored liquid filled with gas, sweetened as hell, doesn't quench thirst and is unhealthy? Black colored liquid filled with gas, sweetened, doesn't quench thirst and is unhealthy. If I describe this product to you, I don't think anyone in this room would even feel like paying a penny for it. It's got no functional value. It is actually detrimental. It is not so exciting. Yet, when suddenly somebody says this is the taste of the new generation and tells a lot of stories of young icons drinking it, or somebody says open happiness and tells stories that when you sip this drink, it brings joy in your face, or a third one tells the story of tasting the thunder when somebody sees an icon jumping uh, across a lot of hurdles to get his bottle of this black colored liquid, or more recently, when it talks about icons who change the frame of the world's rules, what you call Palat Day. The same black colored liquid assumes new meaning, new values, and then people are paying huge premiums, 10 rupees, 20 rupees, to get a drink of cola. It's a very this is an example of saying that whatever product that you have, it can be changed into a brand. If you are able to tell a story that is relevant to the target audience, that can create emotions in the target audience, 
and get the target audience to pay a premium for it. Now, this is the classic origin of brand building from the Pepsis and the Cokes and then to the thumbs up. Let me come closer to our category of homemaking. And I'm going to share with you to begin with four commercials, okay, for four brands that are involved in home building, four products that are involved in home building. I will talk about them after you see the commercials. Abhishek, can you show showcase one, please? Sure. I'm just going to share my screen and uh, sure. show the videos. In case any of you are not able to see uh, the videos clearly, I have pasted the link on chat. So you can okay. see it yourself uh, in, in case there is a disturbance on, on this. सिमेंट से जो बनी है अंबुजा सिमेंट बेटा हाँ बाबा हरिश ये देखिए पहले जमीन देख ले आपकी जमीन Thanks, Abhishek. I showed you four examples, and these are four very interesting homemaking product examples. Fevicol, low priced, white glue, invisible, used in furniture by carpenters. But it's such a powerful brand today because Mr. M. B. Parikh, the owner of this company, decided to start doing brand building in late 80s, early 90s. 
He started the brand building journey in late 80s, early 90s with creating a lot of memorable TV advertising, among other things, which I'll talk to you a little later. Today, Fevicol is not only the undisputed leader in the uh, white glue market, it actually defines white glue, white glue. And it has been able over three decades to keep all lower price competitors out. The benefits of doing brand building early, telling a story around white glue of unbreakable bonds. Asian paints, okay, closer in my mind to your category where you have multiple product brands, which is multiple properties that you sell. And then there is the real estate developer builder brand on top of it. Asian paints also started brand building in the early 80s. Okay, and this is one commercial based on it. It's about the, your partner in building beautiful homes. They've been saying it in very, very many ways for over 30, 35 years to build beautiful homes. Today, Asian paint is a leader in the paint market. Started as an interior paint company, moved into exterior paints very comfortably in the mid 90s. Now it's offering a range of services from home solutions, which is painting solutions, to color consultancies on the back of conscious brand building to build emotional affinity with its consumers. Then two cement brands, again, relatively invisible. They are used as ingredients to building homes. Both Ambuja and Ultratech are strong brands in their own rights. Why I showed these two examples just to say that even in the same category, they found two different stories to sell. Say, Ambuja is about giving st strong structures and Ultratech has been about engineer's choice. Good engineers choose this because it gives you strong structures. Two different stories to create two different brands of cement. So even within the same category, you can have multiple brands with multiple stories. The way I gave you example of cola brands with three examples, in cement brands with two examples. Both of them are pretty strong brands today in the Indian market. What is common to all four of these brands and the Cola brands is important for brand building is whatever your product have a story. First, identify a story that is relevant to your target audience, to your group of prospective consumers and tell that story consistently over a period of time. Be committed to tell that story. Tell that story memorably so that consumers can remember. All these four ads are memorable in their own way. And of course, the very important part, if you want to convert a product to a store, to a brand, is to make commitment of investments. You've just got to spend some amount of money to build this over a period of time. I do see a lot of real estate advertising around much of it as i see it, is in the space of lead generation of actually selling specific properties or products asian paints could have decided to sell only the paint individual paint brands but they simultaneously while they were selling paint brands also built the brand called asian paints so that it gave them easier entry into new products new services on the back of its corporate brand Per se. So the first principle of brand building is that any product can be made into a brand. What you need to have is a clear story to tell it memorably, consistently, and be committed to it over a period of time. None of these brands have been built overnight. They've been built over a period of time. Okay, So that's the first principle. The second principle of brand building is I've shown you four TV commercials. I've referred to TV commercials. But we have to remember that brand building is more than TV advertising. TV advertising is important if you're talking to a national audience and consumers are spread across the country. TV is the fastest way of reaching the audience and building emotion and affinity with the audience. But, you have to, but we have to remember it is not only TV. Brand building is beyond television. If you look at Fevicol's success story, it's not only on the back of TV advertising. The TV advertising did help, was one component of it, but it was also on the back of, for example, a 
whole lot of ground activation programs that they have in what is called Fevicol Champion Club. Where they reach out to carpenters directly and build unbreakable bonds with the carpenter by dis disseminating information to the carpenter. It is also built on a whole lot of design books that Fevicol has been creating for years, which are used by carpenters as references to the consumers for furniture design. Asian paints. Again, the brand Asian paints has been built not only on TV commercials. They've also done shade cards. They've gone decor books. They have a website. They have and maintain a website where consumers can go for both inspiration and assistance when they are actually painting their homes. And they also, like Pericol, have a whole lot of painter and contractor meets where they share knowledge, information with contractors and painters about their products, about how their products can be used, how their products can be access, accessed and stuff like that. So it's important that when you want to build a brand, your story can be told through TV commercials, and that is important. But alongside TV commercials, a whole lot of other touch points can be leveraged to tell your story. Ground activation is very, very important and a very, very useful way. I'm going to show you uh, two commercial, two videos, which are not about homemaking products. One is for Sablon, one is for Lifepoy, of how they brought their brand stories alive on ground when they reached their consumers. So I'm requesting Abhishek to show showcase two, please. Sure, sir. Kids love to use their hands. Kids explore the world with their hands. In India, they use their hands for one more thing. Eating food. Not washing their hands with soap is one of the main causes for illnesses and dropouts. So we gave shape to a simple idea. We infuse chalk sticks with soap. Introducing Savlon Healthy Hands Chopsticks. These work just like regular chopsticks. But at lunch break, they did more than just writing. The chalk powder turned into soap on its own. Through such initiatives, Savlon Swast India is reaching out to schools across the country. Kids' health will now be in good hands, their own. Diarrhea still kills 1.1 million children annually in developing countries. LifePoy believes this can be averted. The Mahakumbh Mela India 2013, the largest religious festival on the planet. Over a hundred million people come here to pray together, live together, and 
eat together. Life Boy Soul saw this as the perfect opportunity to convey an important message. Always wash your hands with soap before you eat. Our medium to roti or Indian bread. Served with almost every Indian meal. And the only way to eat it is with your hands. We created a heat stamp capable of leaving a simple message on a roti. Did you wash your hands with Life Boy? And over 30 days, a team of 100 people stood in 100 kitchens, stamping over 2.5 million fresh rotis, helping us to reach out to over 5 million visitors at the Maha Kumbh Mela. So, will people remember to wash their hands before their next meal? Let's pray they do. Thanks, Abhishek. So, so the first principle is that any product can be made into a brand. All you need is a story, a story that is told memorably, consistently over a period of time. Okay. The second is television is one medium. It's an important medium if you re really at a national level or in a state level because television gives you an access to a large number of people. However, brand building does not need to be restricted only to television. You can do it through many mediums. Activation is one. As I mentioned, Fevicol and Asian things have books through which decor books or furniture books through which they tell their uh, uh, story to engage the consumer. One bit that we need to remember is that brand building is an investment for the future. It's really like mutual funds. You don't get immediate returns. Judging brand building advertising on immediate returns is dangerous or it's wrong. You know, it is actually building a platform for the future. If each of these brands that I've shown you today are very strong and have huge amount of consumer loyalty, whether it's Asian paints or Fevicol or Ambuja or Ultratech or Savlon or Lifebuoy, it's because the companies have invested behind brand building for decades to build this brand. They build, a, and the other bit to remember when you do brand building advertising, you're not only addressing your current audience, people who are in the market for the product. Again, if my judgment from the real estate uh, industry is. Very often, much of our advertising is targeted people who are in the market. As I was chatting with uh, Abhishek a little a while ago, very often lead driven uh, to drive leads. There is, I think that is important, that is essential. But if you are able to build your brand and build equity, then lead generation over a period of time becomes easier and easier because there is more and more trust and love and faith in your brand. So we need to look at brand building uh, efforts as an investment for the future to build a springboard for the future. The third is you don't need to do brand building activities right through the year. You know, very often we sometimes think our budgets are limited. How can we do it? Actually, whatever your budgets, you could do it if you choose the right time right moments to do your brand building efforts. And today, with digital having come in in a big way, there's an opportunity to do it on digital, which is cheaper than television. Yet, I would ask every one of you, whoever has a national or a regional footprint, don't shy away from television. Television has its power of storytelling and its impact. But digital also offers an opportunity of doing communication, which can engage the consumer. Here again, I'm going to share with you examples of two brands, 
Titan and Allen Solly. Both of them are not frequently purchased brands. They are bought occasionally, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year at best. Okay, they are also infrequent, just as much as real estate is. The put down price is much smaller. Yet brands need to continuously build affinity, keep themselves salient in the mind, so that when the consumer is thinking, your brand appears first in the consideration set, and the consumer checks you out. What Titan and Allen Solly do, quite interestingly, is Titan, for example, uses gifting. Perhaps Diwali as a period when they do their advertising. They use times of the year, for example, maybe uh, Women's Day or Father's Day or Mother's Day to do communication around it. They do around Independence Day. Alan Solly, on the other hand, every time they have a new product, they do communication around the new product in a relevant way only in the digital medium. So I'm going to request Abhishek to please show the showcase three. I think they were not able to hear the audio. I'm going to play it again from the beginning. Sure, sure, Bishop. Sure. I just wanted to sign these hands. Jin bar sab ke liye kitna kuch karte. Aise. Khaliya, thanks. This interview is really important here. But how much is it? How will it be? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm Something's missing. What's missing? That smile. Now you're perfect. So many reasons to give someone a smile. I'm nervous. Don't be, Mama. I mean, the dating scene hasn't changed in like 22 years. I think I want to cancel this. No, 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 no. You can't cancel now. Hey, what are you doing? Straight to 
थोड़े गुमक कर थोड़े बुलक कर So I just showed you these. These are all largely digital films. The three Titan films are run on television also, but the others are largely digital films. So the Titan films are also wow. done primarily for digital. But after that, when we had funds, we took it uh, on television. The important part is to continuously tell stories. All of them are interesting stories that engage the Alan Solly. Even they are more product driven. Have got a flavor of story that makes somebody feel good about the brand. per se so uh, digital is a medium where we have an opportunity of telling our stories on particular days at particular times when we have a particular product launches but infuse it with emotion per se abhishek can you go to the ppt please yep yeah so the first thing i, I, I hope i will able to convince you that brand building is for everyone so we don't need to say it is for some other category and not for our category i've demonstrated by showing you four home making brands that can do it so any product can be made into a brand you need a story and a commitment to consistently tell that story this builds emotional affinity and gives you a head start as you launch new products or when the consumer comes into the market to buy your the brand the second is to remember brand building is beyond television and repeating that television is an important medium if you have a large footprint but there are other ways also to tell your story digital activation and through other tools like books and brochures and finally whatever your budgets you don't need to tell your story all through the year you can pick your moments for greatest impact that can build for the future these are three points i want to leave behind with you on brand building the biggest one is the next slide please abhishek invest now to build for the future brand building communication brand building is not for immediate sales it is about building for the future just like mutual funds it's little investments that you make today so that 5 years later 10 years later you have stronger equity with your end consumers you have greater pull with your end consumers fevicol asian paints uh, uh, ultra tech and ambuja in the home making segment are living examples of strong brands built because their marketers their creators have invested 
early to build strong brands for the future. That's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, thank you for listening to me. And uh, Sarvesh and Abhishek, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Wonderful. I think uh, that was a great session, sir. It's, I mean, you've shared your thought about the ground activation part, mm -hmm. about the story, about uh, consistency in communication, and mm -hmm. um, you know, also being transparent in, in mm -hmm. your uh, ethos. Sir, so we mm -hmm. have two questions uh, sure. from our uh, <clears throat> from our audience. One is, uh, how long to run a story? Um, you know, and is the brand ambassador uh, always required or, you know, how, how do you take the decision of whether you want a brand ambassador and what type of ambassador you want? How to take that decision? Okay. So, Sarvesh, let me answer the first part question. You know, when I say you have to have a story for the brand, okay, we can give different cuts to the story over a period of time. So, if the question is one piece of communication, how long you should run it. There are norms that are there. I'll use some media terminologies about saying there's about 3,000, 4,000 GRPs. So that means maybe that intensive thing. If you're heavily on IPL, for example, after you run a campaign on IPL, don't try and repeat it. Mm. Ideally, if you're in heavily on IPL, don't repeat it. Okay. But if you're not so heavy on IPL, you can always repeat it a second time. But after two IPLs, frankly, they the advertising story becomes weak and boring. So that's one part of it. Okay. So uh, uh, that's one part. The second part of it about brand ambassador, it's there are both sides to it. Brand ambassadors help you, celebrities help you to get immediate cut through and recognition. That's a big benefit of a brand ambassador. If the brand ambassador is chosen right, he or she can give certain amount of credibility. Though over my 30 years, I've discovered today, the credibility is becoming lesser and lesser because consumers have become quite intelligent. They will say, Usko paisa diya, that's why wo bol raha hai, or wo bol rahi hai. So I think the credibility part is much less, but there are still people who can bring credibility. Like a Bachchan, for example, still brings. And Amir Khan still brings. But you can bring the brand ambassador for uh, credibility. Great. However, my experience has shown that if you are able to tell an interesting story, and many of the strong brands have not actually used credibility, celebrity, you don't actually need celebrity. If you tell a human story that touches the heart of the consumer, you don't really need a celebrity or a brand ambassador. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, real estate, uh, because we, in, the, in the audience, we have mostly builders yeah. and real estate yes. Uh, yes. industry. So real estate as an industry is a very micro market driven. We have very few builders who are actually pan India. Most of us focus in our own city. Mm -hmm. We build a product that is not an FMCG. It is a product that is bought only once, mm -hmm. uh, very exclusively by that one person. Mm -hmm. um, the perception the, of the media, of the public, of the judiciary, of government, and all other stakeholders is a huge challenge for this industry because every time you know uh, you see negative articles in the newspaper about uh, you know certain real estate companies not doing ethical work. Mm -hmm. In this situation, considering mm -hmm. that you know it's a product that is bought only once, it's a micro market, mm -hmm. and uh, the perception is a challenge. What advice will you give our young uh, developers like me and all of us who are here? What advice can you give us to focus on considering okay. these three top challenges? Okay. So, Sarvesh, I will answer first. Because you are in the micro market and people buy it once. Okay. Uh, one part is at micro market, there is an opportunity of telling your story for an individual developer or a builder to either digital or ground activation in an intelligent, interesting way. In fact, I put those ground activation examples. They are in FMCG category, but you can create a relevant story and execute it in the relevant place and then take it on digital. For example, the Lifeboy one roti that you saw happened in Kumbh Mela, but the effect was 
completely in the digital media after that because that content traveled. So you can touch a set of people and travel across a larger group of people. And because of digital and you're getting a session by uh, the team or the leaders from Google, you can ask them some amount of targeting can be done for the micro marketing part of it. If, for example, you're a developer or a builder in one city alone, that could be a way of doing brand building communication per se. The second part, and I'll stick on that, keep, in, keep remembering that you're generating leads for one property, but if you're developing a second property in the same city, okay, any communication that you do in that particular location is having an impact of prospective buyers also. So keep in mind that when you're doing the brand building activities and spending money behind it, you're also creating greater awareness for yourself in the city, because I, you said you're sitting in Pune, in the city of Pune, so that the next project, more people think favorably about you, per se. Now, let me come to the larger issue that you spoke about, about the perceptions of the uh, category itself. I think there's an opportunity for you as an association, the way the mutual funds have done recently, a very successful campaign in the last three, I'm sure you've seen the mutual funds, Sahih campaign. It was done by the consortium of mutual funds to create education and correct consumer perceptions about mutual funds. It's something I would advise you as an industry body, okay, to come together and say, is there merit in creating a campaign that corrects consumer perceptions about you as a category. Now, whether that should be on television, whether it should be a print campaign, that is an execution part of it. But it's an important thing as a category that you may want to actively consider because a single real estate guy or a, real, a developer may not be completely able to do. You might be able to do it to build credibility for yourself, Sarvesh. But for the industry body, perhaps the mutual fund Sahihai kind of a campaign mm. could give you a cue of something that you as an industry body can consider doing it. I hope I've answered both the questions Perfect. that you had. Perfect. I think the, those were great cues for mm. all of us. In, yeah. front, in fact, uh, you know, Credai as an organization, mm. we are, uh, you know, we are uh, resolved to make good, uh, you know, ethical mm. builders. So uh, it was a great session, sir. Mm -hmm. Madhukarji, okay. thank you so much. Thank okay. you so much for yeah. you know uh, sharing your thoughts, sharing your wise uh, wisdom yeah. in this uh, topic of brand building. And uh, looking forward meeting you very soon. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sadrish.